This is the 2019 Honda HRV EXL Trim Edition. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, Two Guys, Guys in a Ride. Ride. Today we're taking a look at this 2019 Honda HRV. This is the EXL trim level and it's all wheel drive. I'm gonna take you for a tour of the outside, talk to you about its styling, its specs, its cargo, its horsepower, and Nathan? I'm gonna take you for a tour on the inside and show you the whole interior along with some of the technology and the safety features that are on this vehicle. But before we do, I wanna remind you to hit that subscribe button down below and uh, also hit the notification bell on the top. Uh, that way you'll know when we release new videos. And then we are also on Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr and Instagram. So make sure to check us out on those uh, media platforms. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, leave some comments down below. So what do you say, Nathan? Well, let's, let's go, go for, for a ride. ride. Today we are with our friends at Luther Mankato Honda. Okay, first impressions of the uh, test drive of the 2019 Honda HRV. EXL trim. Now I gotta say, I, I like this combin this color combination in here. Yeah, it's it, it's not a gray. It's kind of, it's kind of like a really light tan. No, it's I don't gray. Know. It is. You call it's, it a gray? Yeah, okay, oh yeah, it's light gray. Okay. It, it may be my left colorblind eye. I don't know. <laughs> um, with the with the with the black interior, I, I think it looks sharp. Yeah, I do too. I just noticed something on the speedometer. It, it starts out narrow at the bottom, and there's, there's there's a lip that comes out around the edge. And it starts narrow, and it kind of gets thicker towards the top. Uh -huh. And what you probably can't see from your angle, it looks like it's I a, can. Yeah, yeah. It's see-through. And it, Yeah, yeah. And it, and it's set back again, one of those things, so it doesn't get... Uh, it's uh, uh, kind of luminescent looking. Right. And you don't get the glare on any of it, because you do have a digital uh, RPMs uh, tack, and you do have the digital range and stuff like that, so. But I just think it's a cool design thing when I can see from here, I can see, Yeah. well, I can see 100 miles an hour, 120, and part of the 140. Because it's a little bit of the reflection in there. That the HRV will never reach. And you <laughs> see all around this, the uh, Speedo, it's got that light, that green and that gray. Yes, my dreaded light, I don't like it. <laughs> You know, for, it's a little SUV, it's, small, it's their small SUV, a mini ute, I think is what, or cute ute is what they call them, but, um, you know, it's not bad. The noise level in here is not bad at all at highway speed. No. It's, I mean, we're not yelling, we're just talking comfortable. It's got a little bit of echoing because, again, it's a box on wheels, just like all other SUVs, big and small. But it's not bad. It's com it's a comfortable ride. It's a lot. This is the first time I've been in one, and forever. And I've seen them, and I've thought about them. But I thought, well, it's really small. It's probably got a really small wheelbase. It's going to be kind of bouncy. I'm surprised. It's not. Yeah. Oh, well, it's pretty comfortable. Yeah. And it goes now. This steering wheel uh, is typical Honda. It's got a typical Honda layout. The buttons and everywhere in the same places. You actually do have paddle shifters on this car. I don't know why. It's not very well highly powered. Uh, with its engine, uh, and I can give you all those specs in just a little bit, and they'll be down below. Um, but if you've got one of these, or you've test driven one of these, and you've got any comments that you can share with us, uh, yeah, leave the comments down below, if you will, and uh, give us a thumbs up and let us know um, what you think about this car. If you've had one, and it's uh, you've had it for a while, give us your impressions on a much longer ownership experience. We've got a lot of greenhouse. I mean, it's easy to see out of. You don't yeah. have any blind spots. I do have these uh, rear seat headrests are up. If I had the car, I would drop them down just to give me a little bit more view out the back. Yeah, everywhere I'm touching, except right around the shift area, which is on all cars, everything else is all soft touch materials yeah. and it's comfortable. And this One has thing some cool, you, I, cool. I think, yeah, there we go. This armrest actually slides forward, forward too. Which I do like when they do that. Yeah. You can adjust that. Gives you a little bit more usability. Mm -hmm. It also has some neat storage features, which I like, and, and uh, I'll show you those on the inside review. 
And one of the things I, I like about the interior is that they didn't try to fancy it up with any fake wood grain or fake uh, aluminum You know, the, 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 it's interesting that you mentioned that. They're, the only trim trim mm -hmm. is, a, is thin chrome that's placed around see, the door handles. And right around the dashboard. And the air vents. Yeah. yeah. And I like that. It's, it's, it's simple. It's clean. Yep. That's what it is. But the only thing I can see that this doesn't come with, what kind of surprises me, is home link. There's no home link buttons for, oh. for your garage doors. Oh, you know, right. there's usually three buttons. Oftentimes, we'll put them on the bottom of the mirror when there isn't room on the dash. Right. Or in the middle um, console. Yeah, console or, or, or on your visor. Visor or somewhere. But yeah, I, I don't see that. I, I think I'd like to see that added. Those are nice features when you don't have to have that big bulky clip with you. Right. You know, the hood kind of falls off. You can see just enough of it to yeah, know where it you're does. at. it does. But it falls off nicely to give you a good view of the road. And I would say, I mean, this is, um, like I was saying a minute ago, not a lot of horsepower, but no. for, it, it is based on a, as a small ute. So it's, I think it's peppy enough and the acceleration is there for the vehicle itself. Okie dokie. All right. My turn. turn. <laughs> I just love that right signal on camera that comes on out here. I, I do. Right. I, I, I've liked there. that ever since Honda's come out with it. And I just wish they'd, that they would put the blind spot monitoring system in and then leave the camera there. Right. So you had both. I may have to take back some words here. Okay. It is peppier than I thought. You hadn't driven it. You were riding it and didn't think it had. But that's what I was trying to tell you. For what it is, it's got plenty of pep. But we'll, you gotta think, we'll it's find small, out in a minute it's, here. It's a small SUV, but it's also geared for more city driving and urban driving, stuff like that. And it's also, they want to make sure they get you good gas mileage. So you've you got to have a little bit of a trade-off. So um, this, is, this is kind of a, I don't know what you call this, but I've got it in econ mode, and then I put it into sport mode. So the computer is fighting itself. So it does have paddle shifters, which I'm using. It's letting the RPMs go right up to the red. Yep. There you and go. There 65 you go. and probably, I don't know, 12, 15 it, seconds. Yeah, it was about, well, we, and we were going up a hill. Too. And you had the eco button. On, on, on it, yeah. So it was leisurely. On a flat stretch, it did about 12 seconds, 0 to 60. Nice amount of leg room. I've got the seat all the way back. I uh, will say though, it is not a power passenger seat, neither leaning back or forward back. I think uh, yours, I don't believe no. it is either. Yours no, there's no manual. power seats in this. So in an EXL, now you can get a touring trim on this. So I'm pretty sure then you're gonna get the power, at least the power driver's seat. I'm not sure about that, but we're only talking about the EXL today. You can visit your Honda dealer and take a look and see what the touring has, or you can look at it online as well, or leave us some comments down below. And, you know, around town, as far as, you know, the engine's gonna be plenty, and, it, and, it, and it's pretty peppy, right? right. You know, from the zero to 30 area. Yep, yep. Um, after 30, it, you know, legs a little bit, but that's, what you would expect out of a small economy SUV. Right. I, I do like the fact, you know, because it's an SUV, you sit up high. I, yeah. I like having that better visibility. I've got, you know, it's, it's plenty of leg room, plenty of headroom. Um, when we talk about the seats being, you know, comfortable, yeah. the, uh, the, the, you know, the instrument setup is something that, that's it's interesting. You know, you got the big speedometer in the middle, and then you've got the RPM, digital RPM gauge, along with the shift cluster. Um, and then you know, like your clock and your outdoor temperature. But then over on the right, you have got your, basically your driver's information center. Yep. And it's all digital. So. Right. The only thing that's not digital is the speedometer in the middle. And the graphics are really good. Yeah, I gotta say, just you know, the overall quality, I, I just I, I like it. Um, the fit and finish is typical Honda. Yeah. 
Uh, and I love, I, I, if, if you go to the lot to try one of these, look for one with the black and the gray, the light. It's a, it's a light I'm going to call it a butter gray. I don't know what to call that. It just gray. is a light gray. Did I miss my exit? No. Oh, good. But you were thinking about food. You were throwing it butter in with colors. Well, it's, it's just, it's a smooth gray. It's just a light, it's light the texture. gray. It's yeah. And it, I just, I, and the seats are the that way. And uh, it just looks really sharp, I right, think. Right. It dresses it up. So overall, I really like this vehicle. I mean, you're, you're not you're not buying this for, you know, uh, a, a super powerful or super fast engine. Nope. You're buying something that's going to be economical. It's yep. going to be an all-wheel drive. You a little higher clearance uh, for and snow driving. And it's well under 30 grand. Yeah. Well under. Yeah. You, you get a lot. Um, this would definitely this. be... Uh, is, would definitely be a contender. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, should be for anyone that's looking for something that's a small SUV. The HRV is available in five trim levels the LX starting at 20,620, the Sport starting at 22,320, the EX starting at 20, 23,820, the EXL starting at 25,420, and the Touring trim starting at 28,640. It is powered by 1.8 liter inline four cylinder multi point fuel injected 16 valve overhead cam uh, with IV tech uh, four cylinder engine. Does produce 141 horsepower and 127 pound foot of torque. There is a only one choice in transmission and that is the continuously variable transmission with sport mode. Now out front, you have the projector beam halogen headlights with auto on and off, and you have fog lights. You do have variable intermittent uh, windshield wipers. You have security system with remote control. You have heated body colored power side mirrors with integrated turn signals. You've got the integrated brushed stainless roof rails and then also has the one-touch power moonroof with uh, tilt feature. Front suspension is McPherson strut. Rear is torsion beam rear, uh, on the rear suspension on the two-wheel drive only, and the Dion rear suspension on the all-wheel drive only. We are looking at an all-wheel drive HRV today. Uh, on the two-wheel drive, however, the front stabilizer bar is 25 millimeter, on the all-wheel drive, the front stabilizer bar is 24 millimeter, rear is 19 millimeter. There are power-assisted ventilated front disc and solid rear disc, 11 and a half inches up front, 11 inch uh, disc out back. The wheels are 17 inch in unique silver painted alloys, wrapped in 215-55R17 94V all season tires. And you'll also see there is a body colored roof line spoiler here. Also, you do have LED brake lights. However, there are still incandescent turn signals. Um, so a little bit of new technology, a little bit of the older. You do have a reverse linked intermittent rear wiper washer. Inside, you've got the 60-40 split second row seat that's called the magic seat and I'll show you in just a second here the cargo volume on the two-wheel drive with the seat up is 24.3 cubic feet the cargo volume on the uh, all-wheel drive with the seat up is 23.2 so that all-wheel drive system does encroach upon the inside uh, storage cargo area just a little bit However, with the all the seats down behind the two seats down behind the, to the front row, you've got 58.8 cubic feet on the two-wheel drive, and you've got 55.9 cubic feet on the all-wheel drive. Now the wheelbase on this vehicle is 102.8 inches, and I remarked to that as we were taking it for a drive because it didn't seem like it. I was thinking with a, such a small wheelbase that it would seem like it uh, bounced around a lot more than it did and it actually drove a lot bigger than it actually is and I was surprised at that and pleasantly surprised. The overall length is 170.4 inches. Its overall height is 63.2 inches. The width is 69.8 inches. The front track 
60.4, the rear track 60.6. Now, on the ground clearance, unladen, no cargo, no people, uh, the two-wheel drive is 7.3 inches and the all-wheel drive is 6.7 inches of ground clearance. The curb weight on the two-wheel drive is 2,974 pounds. On the all-wheel drive, the curb weight is 3,142 pounds. Turning diameter, curb to curb, is 37.4 feet. And I gotta tell you, it was really tight, so it felt uh, like it was less than that, actually. Now, fuel mileage on the CVT two-wheel drive, uh, you're looking at 28 city, 34 highway, 30 combined. And fuel mileage on the CVT all-wheel drive, you're looking at 26 city, 31 highway, 28 combined, and this has a fuel capacity of 13.2 gallons. Now overall, the styling of this vehicle, I do like the cladding around the bottom. You've got the uh, black going over the wheel wells, and you've got the black going uh, over uh, 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 down along the bottom sill, and then that black carries over here as well in the front chin spoiler, if you will. I do like the uh, smoky gray chrome on the front grille. It's not the bright shiny chrome, which makes it, sets it off a little bit more. Uh, the bright shiny might be a little bit too much for some people's taste, and it is for me, so I like the smoky gray chrome. I like the headlights, nice design on those as well. And then two, you've got a couple of the uh, uh, support ridge uh, dimples and, and uh, structural lines in the hood. I like that, how they follow up from the grill here and go up toward the windshield. That's kind of cool. I do like the additional line over the fender flare here. And then I like this nice upswept line you see here. It goes up, kicks up toward the back there where you actually have the rear door handle. And then you see a detail line down, down there at the bottom as well uh, to give it a the stamping of the steel doors a little bit more structure, a little bit more rigidity. Overall, uh, nicely done. I think it's a nice little compact SUV. Uh, it sits you up high, but it's not too big. It's not too tall. It's not too wide. And it still gives you very good gas mileage. So now I'm going to hand it off to Nathan, and he's going to take you for a tour of the inside of the vehicle and show you all the features and technology that's uh, inside this car. And uh, all right, here we go. Take it away, Nathan. So here we are stepping on the inside of the 2019 Honda HRV, and this is the EXL trim level. And this is that color combination I was talking about. I just, I really like that. I really think it looks elegant. And then, you know, it's just a little bit of, of chrome trim here and there, you know, around the speaker, the door handle, the, the air vents. And we'll just kind of give you a, a general look here. You can see the, the chrome accents on the, over the air vents and, and around the bottom of the climate control system and the shift handle. I just really like that. And then the seats are the same, sort of a, a it's a gray, they're perforated in the middle, they're leather. Yeah, the seats are manually adjusting. So on the driver's side, you have a height adjustment. You have the tilt back and forth for the back of the seat. And then, of course, you have the pull button for the slide. And we'll take a look at the passenger seat in a little bit. All right. So typical controls up here. The one thing I didn't know is that there's only, only the driver's windows auto up and down. And uh, it, it's kind of hard when you're, if both windows are down and you're just used to pulling. So that would take a little bit getting used to. It would be nice if they would add another auto one for the passenger side in the front. And then at least both would do the same thing. Okay. But it's nice to have auto on the driver's side. That is the one most frequently used. Okay, down here, typical Honda setup here. We've got uh, right here, you have got your road departure mitigation. You can turn that on or off. Of course, the light is on when it's on. Here you've got your um, collision mitigation braking system, and if you turn it off or on, it's going to show up in the dashboard. But you do need to hold it for a minute. There you go. And then traction control buttons right here. Trash control button shows up up here, the symbol. Then, of course, you have your economy button. And if you do that, you get a little display on the right and then in the center of the dash. All right, 
Let's step inside. Honda's arranged this particular dashboard is that you've got your RPM gauge on the left. You've got your parks, your uh, shift symbol. You've got your clock, and then you have your temperature. It's kind of nice that they outline the clock with a line uh, to distinguish it from anything else on the screen. It makes it easy to find in a hurry. Hey, um, that is all digital. So you have an analog speedometer in the middle, and then over here on the right, you have basically your driver's information system. Okay. All right, so on the steering wheel, there are quite a few buttons. And you can see there's a bunch here kind of in the center, and then there's a bunch below. These, by the way, are not push buttons. They're meant to be pulled from the bottom and, or pushed from the bottom. Okay. Same thing on this side. All right, so let's start uh, over here. This is basically your media controller. Okay, so this will go through, this will select your source. So if I look over here, I'm going to FM, or AM, X, uh, SXM, FM, and then it's just going to rotate through those three. If, uh, three. if your phone was hooked up, it, your phone would be in there as well. Okay? And then if I go to uh, use my cursors right here, you can see the channel changing. Okay? And then your volume button is up and down right here. Right there. Let's move down for a second down here. You've got your phone on, phone off. This is also your back button uh, to go back to the previous screen. And then your voice command button for your phone. And these buttons over here. Well, let's start with these. Then over here, you've got your cruise control settings and your um, adaptive cruise control and uh, lane departure stuff right here so if I click on the main button right here you're gonna see that it says ACC and LKAS down at the bottom right and then if I turn on the guidelines you'll see those appear right there and then your lane assist is on okay. cruise control you you just go ahead and you hit it set right there and then resume and cancel and here's your gap setting that Rob was mentioning on the drive that's right there on the steering wheel. These buttons right here are going to toggle through all the information that is on your driver's information screen. So here we go. Let me, uh, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit the up arrow which has the information symbol on it and then I'm going to be able to go through. So here's fuel, vehicle settings, oil life if you, this is all with drive so when you're driving this would show which wheel is getting what kind of power okay. average speed elapsed time and you start over so those are the things that you can get at just by clicking one button and that was just this again up arrow with the eye if you want to select something and look a little bit more detail you use this one and if you want to go backwards in the menu you, you do this one all right, so let me uh, let me go back here. Let, let's go back to vehicle settings. I'm hit select, and then you have tire pressure cal calibration. You can exit, default, maintenance info, door setup, lighting setup, keyless access setup, meter setup, driver assist system setup. To set any of those, you press the select button, and then of course you can then toggle through calibrate or cancel, and then select the. Uh, select or reset button now I'm gonna go to exit and click on select and now I'm back outside and I can scroll through all right let's talk for a minute about the infotainment system this does have uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto right over here you have a physical dimming button okay so you can physically dim the screen you can also use the touch buttons down here if you want you do have a menu button right here, but the menu button only seems to function once you're on info. And then I can click on here, and then I can adjust different things in that, like trip computer, clock wallpaper, uh, system device information, voice info, that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, you have a back button, and then you have a physical power and volume knob right here. Um, the one I want to show you a little bit is, of course, the uh, settings button. And in here, we're gonna go into the camera. And for the rear camera, you have fixed or dynamic, and you can turn them both on or both off. 
Okay, we'll go back a step. We'll do the lane watch one. That's the one that comes out of the camera. This has the same uh, lane watch system that the uh, Civic did that we did earlier. Um, or maybe we haven't posted that one yet, but it's coming up shortly. So you can show a turn signal. You can turn that feature off if you want, uh, but you're going to want it on. I guarantee it. Um, this is the one I want to talk about. Display time after turn signal off. You can set that for, for the camera once you cancel your signal to stay on an additional two seconds. If you just want to check your mirror to make sure nothing else is there, you know, even after you've pulled in. So, all right, we'll just click OK. And then, of course, you can go into any one of these clock info, audio, smartphone, phone. And that's where you'll find all your other information. Uh, but it's all easy to get to. All right, all right, your hazard button is located over here. Uh, this car does have paddle shifters right here. And then, of course, your lighting controls here. It does have auto lights. Okay. And then, of course, your windshield wipers are on this stock. It does have uh, tilt and telescoping. It is manual. And then uh, down here, you have got uh, park, reverse, neutral, drive, and sport. Okay. Uh, down here, you've got your electronic electronic parking brake and then you do have your brake hold buttons and uh, what that's simply gonna do is it's gonna if you press the brake it's gonna hold the brake down uh, until you press on the accelerator okay down here is your climate control this is a auto climate control it is single zone you've got your auto button here of course you're on off your AC your circulatory fresh air front defroster rear defroster and your mirror defrosters are here fan speeds up here this does come with heated seats so you can choose uh, there's two stages you can turn those on uh, it's always a really nice feature in northern climates especially where we live all right now coming back here is your um, center console which has a, a unique cup storage feature so right now it's configured to have one cup here and then maybe another cup here and then a little storage right here but these click in and then you have this wide open space and if you want it there's a little cup button on each side you just press that and they pop out if you want some more you can push through here and those will open and expand and, and collapse down so you now have a little bit more storage and then you can take this center divider out and you have a whole pass-through area down there and then to get them open you just press that little cup button again and they both will open if you open up the uh, center console storage area you do actually have more storage back here and up here both are little have little rubberized inserts there really nice lots and lots of storage let's take a look for a minute at the uh, glove compartment and as is typical tons of space all right so stepping into the back of the 2019 hrv this is the exl trim level again now you got that another nice color scheme going on on the door i like the the chrome handle um, your door locks, of course, are up with the handle. You do have a you know a bottle storage here, along with some other a small amount of storage right there. Uh, the passenger side is only two or uh, uh, would be a four way, so you have slide forward and back, and then tilt the back forward. Well, one of the things I really like, and this was uh, uh, had a similar feature on the Civic that we looked at, but this one's even uh, even better. So look at this storage area underneath the shifter. So you actually have room here, you know, to, st to store a phone. It's got a little built-in ridge to help keep things in. You do have um, a power outlet down here. This is a 12 volt. And then over here you have dual USBs, which I like. I really like seeing two USBs when, they, when they're going to put them in. Let's put in two. This will also hook you into your... Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Okay, let's take a look in the back. So step into the back here of the 2019 HRV. You can see that night again. That I just like that color scheme. Go figure. All right. Uh, so another nice chrome strip around here, and the speaker, of course, and then you got your power window, door handle, and you could uh, store a bottle in there, or it is deep enough to store some other things as well. You got uh, seat back pockets on the passenger side. Again, I wish they had two, and uh, they do not have a. Uh, 
center, center armrest to pull down that I wish they had. They do have, it's a 60-40 split. Um, Rob will talk about the storage and everything on here, and there's quite a bit uh, given its size. Um, these buttons here pull up, and you can fold the seat flat. Or the other thing you can kind of, it's kind of a... a a cheap way to recline but the, you know the seat obviously isn't isn't doesn't have reclining buttons but if you pull this you can push the seat back just a little bit more and Honda gives you sort of a two different positions for the back part of your seat which is nice because it lays it backwards a little bit and both sides of course are the same all right so the other thing in the back here is you do have an additional 12 volt power outlet as well as a bottle holder or some storage area right down there all right, so in the back seat of the 2019 HRV by Honda, um, you're going to see uh, my seat is back where I had it when I was riding. And I, get, it's, I got ample room. But you notice that the seats are set in, kind of about knee level, right here. I really like that. It's just, it's just a really nice design. And it really makes for extra room. I got about four inches. Okay, in terms of headroom, it's a little bit closer. There's a little, there's a slight bulge right here where the handle is, um, but I have about an inch. Okay, favorite thing on this car, we're going to go to a styling feature, so it's purely, you know, subjective anyway, but it's my opinion, my, my thought, I like it. I like the little cut lines here and the curve. They could have just made this come right out and made this flush, but they put this little angle here, and I'm sure it's for air. Uh, coming by but it's really cool I like that attention to detail it's well done not overly done and that's my favorite thing um, one of my favorite features on this car is this button right here which turns on the right mirror if I click it on anytime I'm driving I can actually see out of my right mirror right in my driver's information center hi folks I'm Marky Mark and I'm Dutton. <laughs> since, since I said Dutton on the subscribe part yesterday. <laughs> Dutton Nutton. Dutton Nutton. <laughs> and I have the green ring. Look at it now because you won't see it when you're driving. <laughs> Not my favorite color. Different colors. And I like that with the black, the silver, and the gray. The I think butter you, gray. The butter gray. <laughs> There'll be a new color coming out this fall. <laughs> right? It's, 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 it's comfortable. Yeah. It feels good. That's because I'm driving. That's why it feels good. <laughs> so no, now, bip, 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 bip. Cut that as well. So on the inside, 